In this video, I'll talk about C and assembly interaction and how modularity of code is implemented in programs programmatically. That is, how do we break our uh, code up into modules and how do we make them talk to each other from a programming standpoint. So uh, first, uh, let's, let's uh, set the context. I am going to talk in the context of Lab 7. So I'm going to look at the Lab 7 starter code um, because Lab 7 has, uh, has among other things, uh, C and C and C interacting with each other, C interacting with assembly, um, and uh, and uh, we don't have a scenario where assembly calls C, but um, but we can we can kind of hypothetically uh, take that as a scenario also. Uh, we already already know what happens when assembly calls assembly, uh, so we're not going to worry too much about that. Uh, but we will we will we will take a look at that if need arises. So. So let's uh, let's look at our code. This is the starter code for lab seven. Um, and right off the bat, I, what I'm going to do is I am going to copy uh, this project tree here, the lab seven uh, structure from here and um, make a few notes about what what's going on here. So here's our project structure and I'm going to make it slightly bigger. And we notice that uh, we have uh, we have some C C code. Uh, this is C code that we gave you. This is C code that we gave you. Um, this is C code that we gave you. This is the C code that you will write, right? Uh, you write this, but this is C still C, and there is uh, assembly code that we are asking you to write. So this is assembly. Um, so this is assembly code and the assembly code we're asking you to write is in these two functions. This is the low level, this is the lowest level, and this is the next level, if you will. Um, and in fact, the next level is, uh, is, is uh, this ST7735 is the next level and this is the high level. Uh, we we'll, we talked about the LCD outfix and out uh, deck being part of printf and so on. So here is the module graph uh, for how our code is going to interact. Uh, let's make it slightly bigger. Uh, so what we notice is uh, our various modules, uh, which are divided into separate files, are are have functions within them, and we are we are highlighting the functions that are exposed by each of these modules. So the interface to each of these modules has been has been specified by the functions that that they export. So so the interaction is clearly defined. Uh, but how does how does it uh, happen programmatically? So let's take a simple example of uh, of um, of our io dot c. I'm going to start with io.c because it's a C function. So this is a C function, a C uh, piece of C code, and it has three functions that it that it exports. So the way the way we do that is programmatically is we have a header file called the io.h. So the implementation for io.c is this file where we left uh, we 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 gave you functions with empty empty bodies so you have to fill them but this is where the implementation is but there is a corresponding file called an io.h this io.h is the file that exports your interface so you're going to put all your functions that you're making available to other other modules to call and who calls this turns out that the one that calls this is the lab 7 main so lab 7 main is going to make a call to this particular module. So it does that by putting a hash include io.h. By doing that, I am bringing into my scope 
the ability to invoke those functions, those three functions, which are my IO init, IO heartbeat, and IO touch. And if you notice in my code, I'm gonna call those functions. I'm gonna call IO init here, I'm gonna call IO touch here, and I'm gonna call IO uh, heartbeat here. Now, if I had not put the statement here, this hash include were not here, then immediately I get warnings for this because the compiler doesn't have any idea what those are. So that's how we link C and C. C, a C caller and a C, um, C implementer. Now, every so often, and this is a subtle point, but every so often what happens is, um, this is called the double include problem. And every so often, you'll have a file, uh, let's say um, some main.c, we'll do a hash include of a, a module. Let's say some module.h. And, um, and the module.h, inside module.h, so this is my module.h, in inside module h, I can also do includes here. I do an includes, let's, let's say, hash include of something else, some app.h. Now, it's perfectly possible that I didn't know that module.h did that, and I might, yeah, I might be calling something from app.h, and I could do a hash include app.h here as well. Now, the risk with this is, I will be importing something two times. So if there is a, if app.h had something, wherever app.h is, app.h had a bunch of, bunch of subroutines or whatever it had inside it, they, this will be included twice. So what this causes is a double include. Now we want to avoid that and to avoid that, we use, we use what we call as a solution to double include. The solution is to do conditional inclusion. Conditional uh, definition, if you will, defines. So we do that by inserting a simple statement like this. Now it was not necessary to do this in the, in the case of the io.h, but we for, for, for to be to be able to use this in future, we make a statement that says if not defined, if and if of this particular label io.h, then define it and then the end if is here. The end if is for this if if not defined. So what's going to happen is the first one that that includes app.h or io.h will find that it's not defined, it will define it and it will include everything. But the next one that tries to tries to include the same file will get will find that to be already defined. So it skips everything from here all the way up to here because it's already included. This is how we avoid double includes. So now let's let's look at how how we make a C and assembly interactions, C uh, plus assembly. That is, that is we are going to call uh, in this particular instance, um, let's take the scenario where I have a, uh, a module like print.s and print.s, so let's take the look, the, look at the code for print.s and it has two functions that it, that it implements, LCD outtech and LCD outfix. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna export them. This is how assembly exports something. Now, but C needs to know how to invoke them. So we also provide an, a header file. This header file is basically expressing what those C assembly functions are as C function prototypes. So we again, we, we did the same thing. We did an if and def just to be sure. And then within this, we have these two functions. So now the linkage has been established between C and assembly. The only thing to remember is the assembly function has to make these export statements. Again, if I skip these export statements, if I were to skip these export statements, then nothing is exported. And if I were to build this, it's gonna have a, a 
compilation error because at link time it says that I didn't find them because they are not they're not being exported so those are my two errors there so I'm gonna put them back and this is how I make sure that the uh, C and assembly can interact with each other in terms of of how they how one exports and the other imports uh, or includes the functions okay so C plus assembly assembly needs to uh, create uh, exp have an export statement in the dot s file and we create a dot h file for the interface an interface basically uh, takes whatever assembly function you have. If you have a func some function here, uh, it's simply a label with a bxlr and you export func here, but we need C needs to know how to properly call it. So the interface will give func uh, function and function if the function takes two inputs, let's say in R0 and R1 are inputs and R0 is an output. And what is further, R0, let's say, is uh, uint 32 and unsigned 32, and this is uh, in 16 underscore t. Then I'm going to specify that as part of my prototype here. And uh, let's say I'm returning a character as my output. So I say character. The first input is uh, uint 32 underscore t. And the second input is a int 16 underscore t. I just put that in the header interface header and in my C code I will hash include I will hash include this header file let's call this some foo.h so I'll include this this is some foo.s I'll include that and now in my code I can call func and pass it let's say 32765 275 and equals some character ch all right so uh, I hope that uh, explains how the interaction works uh, and as far as uh, as far as C and uh, assembly uh, talking to each other, um, uh, we always make sure that uh, all all parameter passing parameter passing follows AA PCS, which means that the first input always goes in R0, the second input goes in R1, the return comes in in R0. Now, uh, in the gen most generic scenario, we know that a function can take up to four inputs in R0 through R3, and five onwards, the fifth input onwards will go on the fifth onwards will go on onwards on stack and a function can return a single output and the single output is returned in r0 so that's pretty uh, that's the the aapcs standard and we will always make sure that aapcs is followed when uh, when function c is calling assembly or assembly is calling c